It's the 2022 World Cup. It's Japan's players. Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and today we'll be looking at Japan's squad for the 2022 World Cup. Short version, uh, please. So that brings us to the end of the player by player discussion. And we're going to talk about the team as a whole here. So we'll go back to some of the notes that we had uh, at the top of the podcast. Um, some listeners may be coming in just for the end of this podcast or YouTube viewers. So um, we'll just remind them of a couple of the notes from above. Uh, Japan is prone to lapses in games. I'm not going to expand on that here because uh, the next point actually um, elucidates it. So uh, first game jitters. It seems like they uh, get a bit nervous in their first games. In 2018 World Cup qualifying, they started with a home tie against Singapore. Bit of a disappointment. And in the second round, a home loss uh, to UAE. Uh, in this qualifying for the 2022 World Cup, they started the second round with a home loss to Oman. And in the Asian Cup 2019, it was a struggling 3-2 win over Turkmenistan. So uh, all games they should be winning, but um, uh, a bit of a struggle for them. Actually, they were blessed in the 2018 uh, World Cup where they uh, Colombia took a red card and gave away a penalty to them uh, earlier in the game. Uh, so that really uh, gave them a good uh, start. But they did only win the game 2-1, despite being up a man for most of the game. Uh, incidentally, they meet Germany first here, so uh, that whole discussion may be meaningless. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, we've also noticed a bit of a pattern of some odd strategies in tournaments. So we were really baffled uh, for the third game in the 2018 World Cup, where they fielded a weakened team despite needing points to go through. Uh, they eventually made it, and you, if you go back to the team podcast, you can get the, the full story, but we won't uh, repeat it all here. Uh, a bit strange, too, in the 2019 Asian Cup that they were so defensive in the round of 16 game, and particularly in the quarterfinal game against Vietnam. There doesn't seem much need for um, Japan to be defensive against Vietnam, even though they did have a good young team. And in both of those games, they played an almost Catanaccio style uh, and came out one nothing winners. But uh, I did find it a bit odd uh, that they were being so defensive. And uh, finally, in the last game of World Cup qualifying here for 2022 World Cup qualifying, uh, they fielded a, a new formation with several new players uh, or several um, kind of experimental players, I would say, in their last home game against Vietnam uh, and ended up tying that game, which cost them first place uh, in the group. So some some odd strategic decisions there. Uh, at the beginning of the podcast, we talked about uh, the 2019 Copa America perhaps uh, being less fruitful than expected. I won't repeat all of that here. Uh, but one general concern uh, that came out of the players, uh, well, didn't really come out of the players, I may be introducing it here, is Japan's um, uh, concern with scoring goals. So uh, we did see in the players that they really don't have enough forwards, and the one player who does seem to score a lot for them has been absent for the last six games. Um, but even that player, um, uh, sorry, uh, I just want to, uh, even uh, Yuya Osaka is the player I'm talking about. Uh, even that player, um, uh, I mean, is is not kind of a renowned goal scorer, and they uh, lack a definite uh, scorer, uh, which is often actually a trouble for East Asian teams in general. Um, it doesn't really show in Japan's scoring record, and that's because they've played some fairly weak teams. Uh, for example, they got... Uh, 46 goals over eight games in their round one qualifying for the 2022 World Cup. So uh, it kind of masked um, 
Uh, that included, by the way, a 14 nothing win over Mongolia and a 10 nothing win over Myanmar. Uh, but it kind of masks the, the fact that they do have trouble scoring goals. Uh, that was evident more in the second round where they scored 12 goals over 10 games uh, in the second round. So that's uh, just over a goal a game. Uh, in the 2018 World Cup, though, it wasn't bad. They got six goals over four games against their uh, pretty tough teams. And um, uh, in the 2019 World Cup, they scored, uh, they won, oh, sorry, Asian Cup, they won 3 nothing over Iran, which has a pretty tough defense. Uh, so they can score goals. Otherwise, though, in the final stage of that cup, it was just one goal uh, per game, you know. So a bit of an issue with them scoring goals and uh, perhaps with having a player uh, we saw actually they don't have a definite forward uh, there, so um, have a bit of trouble finding scorers. Let's take a, a look at their club affiliation. So we saw in the player by player thing that a lot of them uh, play in uh, Europe, or if they don't play in Europe, uh, a lot of the ones who play for Japanese teams have played in Europe. And uh, uh, for some pretty good clubs. So we have uh, Tommy Yasu with Arsenal. We have a couple of players with Stuttgart in Germany and uh, Schalke. Um, uh, uh, Eintracht Frankfurt, who are doing well. And uh, uh, kind of um, maybe secondary teams in, in England, like Brighton um, uh, and in, in France, uh, Reims. We have uh, Monaco and Real Sociedad. So, you know, a lot of good clubs in England represented. I would say about a quarter of the players play for uh, the top teams in Japan, Shimuzu, S-Pulse, Kawasaki, Frontal, um, and uh, FC Tokyo. And uh, interestingly, uh, a couple of other interesting ones. Uh, we have three players playing for Celtic in Scotland. And then we have... Um, well, on this squad, uh, just a couple of players playing for St. Truden in Belgium, but actually there are six Japanese players on that squad, and uh, several others have gone through that squad uh, uh, besides. So um, uh, uh, that's uh, kind of interesting details. I forgot to mention Sporting Lisbon as another uh, top club that Japan plays for. So pretty good club affiliation coming into the cup and certainly uh, a lot better than it used to be because uh, I remember about 15 years ago, uh, they really only had a couple of players playing uh, for teams abroad, the, these uh, Southeast Asian teams, now Korea and, uh, and Japan and um, the top clubs over there have players uh, with several uh, several players with their uh, top European clubs, so they've done well improving. Okay, let's move on to this uh, um, chart, um, and it's a little statistic I'm putting together. How many players do they have um, kind of on their uh, slate before them? For Japan, it's uh, quite high, actually, 50 players, and the average is uh, oh, the average is 49, so uh, not an inordinate number of players uh, that they they have before them, and I didn't feel it was a problem in the a, in the going through the squad. Uh, it's more notable if it's uh, say higher than 55 or lower than uh, 40. I would say lower than yeah 45 perhaps. Uh, anyway, uh, total number of players under consideration then. These are players in our uh, definite, likely, or possible category. 33, so that's bang on average, so I won't uh, go into detail about that. Again, only significant if it's out of the range. Uh, number of candidates who are kind of decided upon, so in the definite or likely category. And this actually is a bit high for Japan, 24. Uh, so that means basically 24 of their players are decided upon and uh, there's only room for two more. Well, there's always a couple of injuries and a couple of players in form that come in late uh, and stuff like that. Right now, it looks like they only have a couple of positions to fill. And that's in line with Japan because they tend to be a very uh, kind of uh, steady, stable uh, team. 
so they they don't like a lot of experimentation um there so i think they're looking good but uh there will be a couple of players perhaps um i think they have a bit of a need for outside uh, midfielders and a bit of a need for uh forward so i'm expecting to see a few of those players perhaps brought in for the september games uh trying to find uh, good candidates there. Average age of Japan is 28. That is actually the second oldest among uh, all the teams I've done. The average is 26.7. And uh, uh, anything above 27 is kind of old. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's a negative thing. It might mean they're a bit slower than uh, some of the younger teams. Um, uh, but only Belgium is older uh, on average than them. Uh, Belgium has 45 caps, so with the age comes uh, uh, comes experience at least. But uh, while Belgium has 45 caps, Japan only has 43. Uh, sorry, 34 caps. Um, uh, so 34 caps is is a bit above average, but uh, but. Um, you know the price they're paying in older players is not perhaps giving them the experience bonus that it's giving to uh, belgium let's move on to goals they have 121 goals among their players the average is 126 but i've identified goals as a bit of a problem for japan and uh, i think this uh, number of goals is inflated by playing weak teams in the first round of qualifying and even in the first round of the Asian Cup, you know, teams like Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan, they're not bad teams, but, uh, um, you know, um, teams like Mongolia and Myanmar, they do run the score up on them. So it, it kind of inflates their goal record. Uh, even at 121, it's uh, fairly low. It's below average. And that average is out to... Uh, 3.8 per player, which is also uh, fairly low. Uh, but we won't dwell on it. They do have a bit of a problem scoring. And uh, I'll give you actually uh, a bit of detail on a couple of these categories. So for goals, actually, uh, Osako is uh, pretty good with 43%, uh, 44% scoring ratio, 25 goals in 57 games. And uh, Minamino is 39.5%. Uh, so these numbers look pretty good. Um, I'm only going to talk about players who have more than 15 caps or so. Uh, those are the two biggest scorers there. Um, uh, and they have a handful of players who are above 10%. Um, but uh, Daichi, uh, Daichi Kamada is about 30%, so he would be their third highest scorer. Junior Ito, not bad at 23%. Everyone else is below 20%, and actually um, not many players uh, um, higher than 15%. So, um, a, yeah, a bit of trouble scoring, but again, it doesn't really show in the numbers here because of some of the uh, easy, uh, weaker teams that they do fill their boots against. Uh, and I'll go back actually to talk about age just to point out that their, their oldest player is A.G. Uh, Kawashima. He's 39 years old, so be one of the oldest players to play in the World Cup uh, when he gets there. And they have 11 uh, of uh, their 32 uh, definite, likely impossible players. 11 of those 32 players are above 30, but they do have uh, some... Uh, younger players with uh, seven players of 24 years old or younger. So do have a bit of youth on the squad. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, quite a few players who are older than um, 30 and five players who are 33 years old or more. Okay, let's talk about players and issues to watch. So um, one of the things uh, uh, that might be a concern is that they have no fourth goalie uh, in the wing. So we saw that they have uh, one definite and two likely. Uh, one of the likely is 39-year-old Kawashima. Um, I just worry that if one of those goalie gets injured, I mean, of course, they have goalies uh, available playing in Japan. 
but none of them have really played for the national team. We saw that they have about six goalies who seem to be off the team. So uh, maybe a bit of a problem if one of the players gets injured, but not too bad an issue. And actually no real issues uh, in defense uh, for Japan. So we'll move on to the midfield. And we saw in the player-by-player -player run through that they have too many kind of central midfielders. I should change that to... Uh, uh, central midfielders, but yes, defensive midfielders. Uh, okay, I'll just change that back. And not enough packing, uh, attacking midfielders. I might say too that they have uh, too many central midfielders and not enough outside midfielders. But they seem to manage, and I don't think it's a big problem. Just um, in terms of position, variety of position, they have four definite candidates as defensive midfielders and three likely candidates as central midfielders. So obviously some of those players uh, have to play out of position and have been playing out of position. Actually, we saw in the in the player-by-player um, -player part of the podcast that uh, it seems like all of their players are playing out of position or a lot of players are. It seems like players coded in certain position play anywhere but in that position but um uh okay and then uh in terms of outside midfielders they just have four midfielders who are either right wing left wing or attacking midfielders so uh, a bit of a concern there but uh, uh they seem to have managed uh, uh fine uh, and on the attack probably one of the more serious issues uh, not enough forwards and uh, no big scorer uh, although they have players with good percentages, they don't have one forward that they start all the time and rely on. In fact, we didn't have any forwards that were definite candidates uh, there. So uh, again, I think in September they'll be looking uh, for that. Okay, let's take a look at some of the new players on the team. So uh, Hidemasa Morito, uh, actually not that young. He's 27 years old and has been with the team since 2018. He plays for Sporting Lisbon, uh, and he's a definite candidate, so kind of an exciting uh, player there. Ayo uh, Tanaka, and I'm organizing these actually according to definite, likely, and possible. So the first three are definite uh, new players who have made it onto the squad, and, uh, uh, you know, we have them as definite making the World Cup. So Ayo Tanaka... Uh, been with the team since 2019 and is 24 years old. Plays for Fortuna Dusseldorf in Germany. We have him as a definite candidate. And uh, Shogo Taniguchi. Um, uh, not young, actually. 31 years old. Uh, but he uh, got his first cap in 2015. But we have him here because he's never made it to a tournament. Uh, but now, in uh, recent times, he seems like he's going to be a definite candidate. He plays for Kawasaki Frontal in Japan. Uh, then we have four candidates who are uh, at the likely level. Hiroki Ito. So Hiroki Ito um, is 23 years old and has five caps uh, since 2022, so just joined the team. He plays for Stuttgart in Germany. Uh, we have... Uh, Kaoru, um, sorry, Kaoru uh, Mitoma uh, as a likely candidate. He is 25 years old, but just uh, uh, joined Japan in 2021. He has nine caps and five goals, so uh, kind of exciting there. And uh, he has uh, moved to Brighton in England since 2021, but is actually, uh, no, I think he's back at Brighton now because his loan spell with Union saint Gilois in Belgium ended. Uh, so um, uh, a potentially interesting candidate there. Um, and also likely Kyogo Furuhashi. So uh, he has been with the team since 2019. 16 caps and three goals, not a great return for a forward, and is 27 years old. But uh, one of the three players playing with Celtic uh, there. Uh, Daichi Kamada, uh, also a forward and uh, uh, likely to make the cup. And uh, 21 caps since 2019, but no goals. So um, I don't think he's been playing as a forward, but still 
Uh, that is not great. Uh, he plays for Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany, though, and they seem to be doing quite well uh, recently. And uh, we have uh, just two possible candidates uh, here. Ria, Rio Hatate, one of those three playing for Celtic in Scotland. He's 25 years old, just joined the team in 2022. And uh, Takuma Asano uh, plays for Bolcom in Belgium, but has been with uh, Arsenal in England and Stuttgart in Germany uh, as well. And he's 27 years old and actually has been on the team since 2015 but uh, has not played in a tournament yet and actually may not play in this one because he's a an injury doubt which is what we're going to move on to next so not too many injuries for japan we have uh, ko itakuru uh, a central midfielder who we consider a likely candidate uh, but he is injured um, with a ruptured knee uh, ligament uh, and that injury uh, uh, happened in mid-September, and he has an unknown return date. Uh, uh, an unknown return date, but um, I don't know whether I read this or just because of the nature of the problem. Uh, but I have a note here that he's unlikely to make the cup, so that's too bad for Ko Itakuru and uh, for Japan. Uh, we just met Takuma Asano as a new player. But um, he has actually the same problem exactly like uh, a ruptured knee ligament from uh, mid-September with an unknown return date. So uh, it also says in my notes that he's unlikely to make the cut uh, also, which is really unfortunate for him because uh, he was selected for the 2019 Asian Cup but left out due to injury. So... Um, uh, it would be sad if that happened twice in a row to him. Finally, we'll move on to notable absences before we do the predicted starters. And um, yeah, this player wasn't as much a veteran as I thought he was, but Jen Shoji, uh, a central defender who was a starter in the 2018 World Cup. He didn't play in the 2019 Asian Cup but for the notable absences uh, I think of uh, many listeners who go from kind of World Cup to World Cup and don't necessarily follow the regional cups in between so I go back to the 2018 World Cup squad here anyway Jen Choji um, he actually did uh, start a couple of games in 2021 but um, uh, has not appeared for the last 12 matches. So an outside possibility of coming back, but uh, uh, not certainly not likely. Uh, Makoto Hasebi. Uh, Makoto Hasebi, 114 caps uh, from 2006 to 2018. Uh, a real veteran for the team. He's actually still active with Eintracht Frankfurt uh, in Germany, uh, but he did announce his retirement uh at the end of the 2018 world cup so we won't see him uh one of their big names honda uh, keisuke honda uh 98 caps and 37 goals uh in his period from 2008 to 2018 actually he was just a substitute uh in the world cup there so was uh starting to age out even at that point he's now uh 36 years old so, um, well, 32 years old there, but anyway, he wasn't a starter, uh, but a big name, and he played uh, in Lithuania uh, in 2021, um, uh, and in Azerbaijan too. Uh, he's currently on a task, so maybe those will be the last teams that he plays for. Uh, Shinji Kagawa uh, last played in the 2018 World Cup. And he played from 2018, uh, 2008 to 2019, actually. So he did play a couple of games uh, in 2019. But um, 96 caps and 31 goals. Uh, he's actually with St. Trudent in Belgium, that team where Japan uh, seems to be forming a little society. Uh, and he's played all over the place, including Borussia Dortmund, and Manchester City, his biggest clubs uh, there, and last uh, played in the 2018 World Cup as far as tournaments go anyway. Shinji Okazaki, uh, Okazaki 
uh, also off the club. He played from 2008 to 19 and has uh, 119 caps and 50 goals on record. He's 36 years old. Uh, still playing and uh, humorously with St. Trudence in Belgium. Kind of an ongoing joke through this because so many Japanese players have been there and uh, a real veteran there. And finally, uh, Takashi in, in, Inui. Uh, less of a, a, a name than some of the ones we have above, but he played from 2009 to 19 and has 36 caps and six goals. But he was a starter uh, also in the World Cup, like, like Jen Shoji. Uh, that's the reason why he's here. All right, well, our last order of business is moving on to uh, predicted starters. So uh, here we go. There's the list uh, of candidates. And we'll begin with, uh, of course, the manager, Hajime Moriyasu. Uh, well, we doubt Japan's going to change that right before the cup here. So we'll consider him a, a starter or a definite uh, uh, going to be there. Uh, for a goalkeeper, Almost certainly uh, Shuichi Gonda. And uh, the likely candidates are Daniel Schmidt and uh, Aiji Kawashima. Uh, we think those three will uh, definitely uh, make the cup with Sh uh, Shuichi Gonda as the definite candidate. Uh, for central defenders, we have Mai Yoshida as definite and Takahiro Tomiyasu and Hi Hiroki Ito as uh, likely. So uh, in terms of starters, uh, almost certainly Maya Yoshida and Takahiro Tomiyasu. Uh, Ito, uh, Hiroki Ito actually played as a left back and in the last three games, so maybe a starter if some changes on the foot uh, there, um, but not as a starter uh, for the central defenders. So, but they'll probably bring five or six, so I'm sure uh, he'll be going to the cup. Um, as a left back, I'm going to say Yuto Nagamoto as the starter, although he didn't start the last few games as left back. I think he actually may, may have moved over to the right rather than have not been there. Um, and uh, we have uh, Sho Sasaki as a possible candidate, but I wonder if uh, that central defender Hiroki Ito is actually moving into the backup position uh, as a left back. Nevertheless, we're just doing starters here. Uh, on the right back, uh, Miki Yamane has um, uh, put in a good bid uh, recently, uh, but I still think Hiroki Sake, uh, uh, who, who really, in my mind, is the starter, um, has a strong bid too. So I'm going to hedge my bets here and just say that uh, I put them in yellow, which kind of means both of them will start. In fact, I'm kind of cheating and being a bit indecisive there. Uh, it's just that Hiroki Sake uh, didn't play the last several games. So uh, we have a bit of a question mark about where he's at, but um, I might see him as a starter above Yamane. Anyway, for defensive midfielders, we have four um, definite candidates, Wataru Endo, Hidemasa Morito, Ayo Tanaka, and Shogo Taniguchi. And uh, four definite to make the cup. But as far as central midfielders go, uh, I'm only going to say uh, Wataru Endu as a definite starter uh, among those. And uh, we also have four, uh, three likely central midfielder, uh, Gaku Shibasaki, Ko Itakuru, and Yuta Nakayama. Um, and uh, among those, I would only say Shiba Saki uh, as a definite starter uh, there. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if some of those others did start, but I'm not confident enough to say that they'll be starters. Um, Genki Haraguchi is a big enough name that I think he should be a starter, but really he's only started seven of their 20 games. So uh, I can't really put him down as a starter. It's a bit hard to... Uh, 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 hard to imagine because he started in the World Cup and Asian Cup uh, the last two tournaments, but um, uh, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, right midfielder uh, Junior Ito, I do think will be a starter. He's uh, pretty much owned the right attacking side. And actually on the left attacking side, 
is uh, I'm going to predict uh, Takumi Min, uh, Minamino. He's actually uh, a forward, but in the play by player, I moved him uh, to the left side because ever since after the Asian Cup, he has been playing uh, kind of as a right attacking or left attacking midfielder or left forward. As far as uh, uh, forwards go, though, uh, and those are really the only names I'm seeing, but maybe I should go through couple of the names. So right midfielder, uh, definite is uh, Junior Ito. That's the only definite or likely. For left wingers, uh, I put uh, Takuma Minamino here. And uh, uh, Kaoru Mitoma uh, is also a likely candidate to make the squad. I don't see him as a starter, though. And for right wingers, uh, Takafusa Kubo, I see him more as a substitute. Uh, I wouldn't uh, nominate him as a starter. Um, for forwards, we have uh, attacking midfielder Ritsu Doan uh, as likely to make the squad. And he was a starter for a while in the Asian Cup, but his uh, position has kind of been taken over by Ito there. So uh, I can't put him down as a starter. And uh, for <laughs> forwards, we have uh, Kyogo Furuhashi and Daichi Kamada. Uh, I don't think either of those are really starters. Uh, to me, it's Yuya Osako, but he's been absent for the last six games, I think. Uh, and so I can't say with any confidence that he'll be a starter, but maybe I'll put him in yellow. Uh, and um, uh, some of the others, yeah, maybe uh, will start a game here or there. But I really think they're kind of uh, looking for a, a, a centre forward and, and will try out a couple in um, the September games uh, because I don't think they've really settled on one. So uh, that's it for what it's worth. Uh, I'm not sure I've made 11 players there, but uh, those are the players who I do see uh, starting on the pitch. And that brings us to the end of the podcast. So thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. And um, Keep in mind that we will be doing an update podcast uh, probably in mid-November, uh, and uh, we'll do that after they've published their final list so we can uh, we can see how accurate we were here. Meanwhile, keep an eye on us at Soccer Files Canada. That's Soccer Files with a PH in the middle and an S at the end, and our website is on the uh, screen here, but for listeners, it's soccerfiles.captivate.fm and check our show notes uh, both on on the podcast site and the YouTube site uh, we've been improving those show notes uh, with li good links and stuff like that so um, thank you for listening and we will see you again next time bye bye <laughs>